with the Espresso Service Network and I'm going to be going some of the uh, internal uh, parts of the Agro One uh, Pure Coffee. So do you like the Agro? So far, yeah, I, I like it. Okay. Uh, I like the way they did their hoppers, so just pull that forward and you can take your hopper off. Nice thing about it, it's got a completely flat bottom on it, oh. so it won't tip over and you lose all your beans. Which I guess apparently is not a feature that you see a lot of. No, a lot of hoppers will be funneled, so oh, right. you're taking them off and of course there's no way to really set them down properly. So you put them in a bag yep. or a garbage can or something to hold well, it? Well, yeah, you, you, you know, or you spill them and then you're like, I'm sorry. So they've made this pretty easy. We're just loosening screws to get at the side panels. When you're servicing this machine, are you most likely opening both sides? Uh, you're probably you're probably just doing everything through the front. Um, when you're getting into the valves and stuff, that's more towards the rear. So this side is just your electronics. And of course you have access to some of your, your tubes that are going to your steam and your hot water. Is this the... That's one of the grinder motors. Okay, okay. But this side is just for if you needed to get at the electronics to do some testing of voltages and stuff of the components. Okay. This side is where we're going to have access to our pump. This is our pump pressure. So of course, uh, adjusting our pump pressure is right down here. Uh, this is something that only techs should be doing, not customers. Uh, now, so why do you say that? Why do I say that? Mm -hmm. Because if they're not knowing how to adjust it, I've seen customers adjust it when it's not even running and they end up way over adjusting. And then, you know, that causes problems with the machine. It's not necessarily that they will damage the machine. They could cause other things. I mean, because they can accidentally send it to 14 bar. And of course our expansion valve is gonna open up at 12 bar, which means while they're brewing, it's opening up. Uh, it just, it means that you're getting inconsistent shots. So one of the things that you might have to adjust and you'll need a long screwdriver for is our cold mix to our hot water. And that is right there. So that's that's one of those things that so you're going to have your your hottest hot water temp running and you're basically adjusting it. You can adjust it for temp if that's the way you want to do it, but I generally adjust it so that it's not spitting and sputtering uh, while everything's running. So generally that temperature is going to be right around 205 degrees. To, to avoid spitting and sputtering. Yeah. Now, is that where you're going to adjust your temperature? That or is where is that you're adjusting that. The rest of it's done by programming. Okay. That is just your set point at your hottest temperature. Okay. So if you close that off, your hottest temperature is boiling and you can't adjust anything from there on out. So you need to make sure that it's not closed off. Okay. So it comes from the factory. They have it set pretty, pretty well. It's generally around 200 to 205 from the factory. But if you did have to do an adjustment, that's where you would do your adjustment. So obviously if you're at a high elevation, uh, you know, like Denver City or something like that, you might have to adjust more cold mix into it because obviously their boiling point is is less. Our boiling point where we're at is two, 208 to 209. Or obviously if you're at sea level, it's 212. Well, some, okay. yeah, so some of the components here, this is our brew valve. Our brew valve actually has its own drain line. There's two drain lines coming off of this machine. So you have your main drain line that is coming off our drain tray, and that also comes off of our uh, expansion valve, 
and also our, our venting valves that are up here. And then, and like I said, the uh, so the brew valve itself has its own drain line, which is nice. It just keeps everything a lot cleaner for the brew valve. Uh, this is our brew boiler right here. And of course, this is our hot water uh, bypass. So for Americanos, that's what's going to be opening up to add our bypass hot water. And, and it's a tempered water. No, it's coming off the brew boiler. It's temperature set. Okay. Our hot water for our hot water wand is coming from the steam boiler. That is tempered. That was what the adjustment we just went over. And our steam boiler is next to that, back straight down from here. The back panel comes off. So you will have to remove the t these two screws completely for your back panel. Uh, this is an easy teardown, isn't it? And I love the size of this machine. It's it's very so compact. Oh, great! It's very heavy. Oh, is it? How it's much? Heavy. Do you know how much it weighs? I don't know how much it weighs. Well, I, I can move it, but it's heavy. When the uh, when the delivery guy came, he said the pallet and the machine was 165 pounds. So just. And of course, to remove your top, you have to remove the rest of these screws all the way out. So, so for the sides, you were just loosening them. Yeah. And now you've got to remove them. Okay. And then the top just comes off like so. Never, never leave your screws because they're going to get lost, right? So here's our steam valve block right here. So this is one of the items that you will probably maintain through time. This is our transducer for the steam boiler. Here is our steam boiler right here. Here's both of our safety devices for our brew boiler and steam boiler. Uh, brew boiler temperature probe. So what's this, the safety device? What does it do? So it's that's in case uh, it overheats or it's a dry boiler. It'll trip. Nice. And save your element. Yeah, save your element, yes. Yeah. That's our temperature probe sensor that goes back to our main board for our the temperature on the brew boiler. And this is PID controlled? Yeah. And they don't advertise it PID controlled because it's just controlled by the board. Okay. So, but there is a PID. There, yeah. In here. So yeah. one of the mistakes that people make on super automatics is they start playing with the temperature. It's something to be very careful about because you're adjusting the temperature on the brew boiler, but the line is going out to a brew valve, and then a line is going out to the brew unit. The brew unit also has a heater in it uh, to keep it warm, but there is a certain amount of loss of temperature there. So. If you're like, oh, I want my brewing temperature at 200 degrees, and you set your brew boiler at 200, it's most likely brewing at, you know, 196. It's not brewing at the temperature you want. So, if you're what, what do you do if you're unhappy with your brewing temperature? If you're unhappy, you can adjust it. If you think, you know, it's not extracting right, there's there's so many different parameters you can kind of play with on this. They've simplified some things on it. Here's our grinder adjustment motors. That is so, a self-adjusting grinder. Yeah, that's a self-adjusting grinder. Well, that is really cool. So if it didn't have the self-adjusting grinder, then these wouldn't be here. It would just be a normal um, gear drive like that uh, with the that you would adjust with from the front panel. You would have an adjustment on the front yes, panel, yes, right. But you recommend the self-adjusting grinders, don't you? Yeah, uh, it's it's a great feature, and so far they've proven them, proven themselves worthy. So they've done a pretty good job on that, right? And it kind of takes the responsibility off the barista, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. It keeps it more consistent. Yeah. So their job is just to make sure the self-adjusting grinder is doing their job. Really? By, yeah, I mean, by you still want to pay attention to your coffee and, Always. And, and check it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a super automatic doesn't stop the responsibility of the 
product quality yeah, you, on the barista. Yeah, you can't ignore certain things. Pretty much. So here again, this whole block here is for the steam boiler. So that's it's. You got two tubes. It's not tubes. It's connected directly to the steam boiler. This block is connected directly to the steam boiler, and of course you have. This is our auto steam valves here. Um, and then you have a vacuum valve here and a safety valve here. That's all for the steam boiler. The, these yeah. are just vents. So this is a vent off our vacuum valve. And this is a vent off of our ice steam. So whenever the ice steam shuts off, uh, if there's any back pressure on it, it'll, it'll relieve it there. But this creates an open air gap. So any milk that is in the wand will drain out. And of course you're purging it too. So you're blowing out any of the res residue. So if we come back up to the front here. So one of the things that you're going to, this is where most of your maintenance work is going to happen. So there is a seven millimeter screw right here. So you're going to loosen that, and then you're going to pull your panel open. Apparently it was already loosened. Yes, it was. Okay. And access to the brew unit, you're just going to loosen another 7 millimeter screw, and that just slides over, and then you can open up and you have complete access at your brew unit here. So you can take these panels off, or these slides off, and you just you have access to uh, take everything apart, your pistons apart to replace the O-rings. So how? So here's, so here's our O-rings on on our piston right there, and the upper upper and lower pistons look identical, and they use the same parts. Oh, great! That's convenient. Yes. Um, anything that the customer can do on this, it's all not, tech. Not recommended. Okay. There shouldn't be anything that they're doing here. If I mean, if we find that, see, we have some coffee grounds there. So if we're finding we have a lot of buildup in coffee grounds, so there's a way to, you're supposed to calibrate the machines. But if it's like overfilling with coffee grounds, that means it just didn't get calibrated properly. So we're going to need to get that taken care of. Okay. In that case, you might want to, depending on the customer, then you could show them how to open things up and, you know, get a vacuum in there and vacuum things out. Okay. But you really don't want them messing with the brew unit. So calibration is, is happens at uh, pre-install? Pre-install and any time you do a maintenance. You're going to calibrate or check the calibration? Yeah, you're going to check okay. the calibration. Because um, the calibration is going to change from the time you do it till the time you come back. It how often, will have changed. How often, uh, on a guesstimate, because I know that you can't say exactly. They're basing this on 40,000 cycles and of a, maintenance. And 40,000 cycles means 40,000 shots? or Well, it means 40,000. It's op, The brew unit is operated 40,000 times. Okay. Whether that be brewing an espresso or doing a rinse or doing a cleaning, those all count. But 40,000 is quite a bit of time, isn't it? It can't, depends on the customer. Uh, right, on the usage. Yeah, 250 the drinks usage. a day is... Where this is going, it's going to most likely fall on, we have it where we want to see it at least once a year. So once a year, you know, so it does it both on either time or... Cycles. Or cycles, whichever comes first. So you set it for both. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And then, of course, you need to make sure you change those parameters when you come in to service it. You need to get into programming, change the date, or not change the date. This is not based on date. It's based on um, months. So you just tell it how many months you want it to go before it prompts. So right now it's set for 12 months. So you go in there and you you have to still go into programming and reset reset it. Do you um, remember um, a client, they had an, I want to say it was an Ecolino uh, super automatic espresso machine. They bought the machine, the techs or a, a tech or techs came out and set up a couple of them and they just couldn't pull uh, a they decent, pulled, consistent they pulled, job. Yeah, they pulled uh, different 
shots completely tasted different everything and that's just because they did not set everything up properly so the installation is where uh is important and if it's not right that immediately you need to address that yeah. whether you're the customer yeah, or the you technician don't calibrate say, hey. the grinders or you calibrate the grinder on one and you don't on the other yeah they're gonna taste different right unless and you get lucky go for it so some of the things that a customer is going to want to make sure they're doing so anytime that they utilize the steam when it get, reaches temperature it's going to ask you to purge it. So you want to wipe the, wipe the wand off and then do a purge. Another thing that you want to do is you want to do a nightly cleaning on this, just like any of your wands. Um, you're just going to fill a pitcher with cold water and they have a tablet um, that is like a citric acid based tablet that you put in there and you know, you'll just run it like a normal steam and just let it sit there. So, um, a question do you have to use specifically their tablet or they use... well of course they are recommending that and the reason they're recommending that is because there is a plastic base here so they are afraid that if you use any other cleaners it's gonna that eat. they don't know about that it may eat at the plastic and of course once you once this deteriorates out you have to replace this whole assembly which is a lot of money yes isn't it's it? like 700 or six hundred dollars um it's not it's not a cheap cheap item by itself the okay. reason you want to do that is because you don't want build up through time inside right. of of this and the steam tip does come off so that you can clean that as well so the other thing is is this operates up and down and of course part of your cleaning is you're going to take the nozzles apart which all you do is just lift this this up here. Now, <laughs> what? Why the two t tubes? Two tubes. So this is your hot water bypass. If we had a centralized hot water, that would be over here, and if we had milk, that would be in the back here. So it's ready to go, and you can operate this as a, a you can buy purchase it in a one group, yes. which is a top milk. Yeah, in a one step. Perfect. Did I say one group? I'm yes, sorry. Yes, you said one group. So. so yeah, you can purchase it in in a one step, which is your top milk. Um, I would not ever recommend ordering the other the Venturi type system system that uses uh, a one step milk in a Venturi. Uh, <laughs> they are very inconsistent and always get dirty. And describe a Venturi system. It's, it's kind so, of like a capillary yeah, action. So, yeah, so in a Venturi, so what's happening is the steam is, is creating a suction from the milk. And, of course, it's steaming the milk at the same time. Uh, the problem with that is you have a tube that is going back to the milk that stays, has milk in it. And it just depends on how long of a period of time that milk is there. So if you don't use the machine for a few hours, all that milk that's in there has gotten warm. Oh, gotcha. And it okay. just gets, in in my opinion, it gets a little so, gross and disgusting. But, but they're also, because of the suction, they are inconsistent. Um, where when you go to the top milk system, now we're using pumps and we're able to flush water back through the pipes to clear everything out. So it's clean. Yeah, gotcha. so it's clean. Okay. So they're tip of the day. Yeah, that's it. why there's such a big price difference in those. Right. Because you just have way more components. You can't go cheap with a, a super automatic. Especially, you are gonna yeah, especially on a milk system. Perfect. You don't want to go cheap. Yeah. You, you're not going to be happy. Right. And, you know, um, it seems like the share machines are really, really popular, but they're really kind of hard to maintain, aren't they? It's not that they're hard to maintain. They have a lot of throwaway parts. Most of their components are literally, their brew unit is throwaway, their grinders are throwaway. Mm. It, there's just a lot of components in there. So, But it make, does make the machine cheap come in cheaper. Then other come machines... in, they're still not a cheap machine. Uh -oh. Okay. They're right. just kind of a popular, they are a popular brand out there. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't think you see the agro a lot, at least in our area. No, so where the agro benefits is that we're we're just able versus the share, we are able to dial in our coffee way better and have long extraction times. Uh, versus a share, you cannot um, fine up your grind too fine because it messes the machine up and becomes inconsistent. So there's just a few challenges to the yes. machine. Yeah. Yes, there is. So another nice feature about this is removing the front nozzle is really easy. So you just pin it on the side here. And of course this whole nozzle comes apart like so. Nice. It, nightly? Recommended nightly, yes. Okay. And of course, you don't have to pull this back down. You can just go up and then back down. Yeah. Grounds drawer. So when you've gotten to the point, it's going to ask you to empty the grounds drawer. Empty the grounds drawer. The grounds go in there. You dump that. Vacuum that out or just wipe it out. Okay. Uh, that's your main on-off switch. Just that goes back in. If you have questions, uh, shoot, them, shoot, shoot them down below. The Agro is a nice machine. We recommend it, recommend it to your customers or, um, and I'll put a link down below so you can, uh, two links, one for the one, which is this one, and then a link for the, um, the next. And you can take a look at the pricing and then just call us if you have any questions. We're happy to counsel you or your technician, your sales. If you have a salesperson that you're working with and they need counseling, we're happy to help them um, so that you guys can um, purchase your machine direct from your salesperson. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a great day.